Hey guys, I'm Shada and today I'm in my studio and we're going to be doing another in computer tutorial and I'll show you how to make some really cool graphics for your blog, for Facebook, for your Instagram, really just for all your social media platforms. How about that? Uh, and we're going to use a super dope website called Graphic Stock. They have this humongous unlimited download library of vectors, illustrations and photographs. And not only is Graphic Stock sponsoring today's video, but they've also offered each of you an exclusive free seven day trial. So what you can do is go into the description box below the video and click the link to get your free trial, get into the site, take a look around, grab a whole bunch of images, and then you can actually follow along with the tutorial today because we're gonna make some super cool graphics for your social media. All right, so let's get started. Right, so this is of course a website so I'm just going into Safari and going to graphicstock.com and of course you guys can just go into the description box of this video click that link and then open up your seven day free trial so that you can grab some images along with me and we can do this together so I'm just logging into my account here super simple and then once you're in they've got a really nice front page and even just what's here I can think of some fun stuff just to do with like the purple flowers or the the mountains and they have everything categorized into um, photos vectors and illustrations so these illustrations you can see they've got some cool watercolor splotches and arrows and laurels and anchors all this really on trend stuff and that's just on the front page and then they also have vectors and if you don't remember vectors are unlike images or graphics or bitmaps in that they're not made up of pixels so you don't have to worry about that dirty word pixelated you can scale vectors up and down and they remain true so I'm going to go to the search bar and I'm searching tea. Um, <laughs> as you guys know, I just love tea, but I'm also planning a blog post about making homemade tea bags um, for gifts. So I'm going to just change my search up a little. I'm going to keep it pretty open, but I am going to change it to photos. Um, I'm going to go with most relevant at the top. I'm going to keep these pretty open. I'll keep the orientation to all because we can always uh, crop these photos down later once we download them. So yeah, you can search and then you can filter all your results. And then as you can see here, I've got a ton of results for tea. And I'm just sort of browsing through this library and seeing what I like. There's a lot of really cool stuff, a lot of flat lay shot from above, really on trend. Um, this one here. So all I'm going to do if I like that is click that download button and then you can see it just pops into the downloads on my Mac and I've got it set so that it sort of previews once it downloads. But yeah, it's super simple. You just sort of can scroll over the images if you like them. Um, they'll enlarge as you scroll over them. And if you like them, just click that download button and you can grab as many as you like. I like this one. It kind of has that bluey Instagram filter over it. So that's cool. We'll do something, some sort of cool graphic with that later. And here I'm not worrying about what I'm going to be doing later. I'm just browsing through the library right now and just grabbing anything that I think I might like, that I think I might want to work with. And then later I'll decide um, which picture is actually the best one for the graphic that I have in mind. Um, but it's nice, it's all unlimited. So right now I'm just sort of grab, 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 get everything that I even halfway think is cute. And then later I'll figure it all out once they're on my computer. That one's super pretty with the rosebuds. And I think I'll just grab one of these um, flat lay um, T ones that are shot from above and maybe some of the cute teacups. Ooh, I like that one a lot, that's cute. Okay, I think you guys get the point. So I'm going to download just a few more and then we'll go and check out my downloads folder. All right, boom. So we are back on my desktop here and I'm going into my downloads folder and you can see all those images are just sitting there. Uh, they're on my computer now and I can do whatever I want with them. So I'm sort of looking through them. Um, I just love this one. I like that it's shot from above and that it's on a white background. It's got this great punchy color. 
So I'll go into my browser. I'm going to use Firefox and I'm going to go to pickmonkey.com. So this is a free in browser editing software. And I'm just going to open up um, one of these uh, files, one of these photos. So I'll, again, just going into my downloads and sort of taking a look through which one do I want to work with. Um, but they're all sort of on my computer now. So I can do whatever I want with any of these files, uh, which is pretty cool. So right away, I'm opening this one. And what I want to do is crop it. I do like using a portrait or sort of a vertical image on the blog, especially since a lot of people are viewing my blog on their phones and these, these sort of portrait images fill up the whole screen, right? But I want to crop it down a bit um, just so it's not too long. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a quote and just sort of make a nice simple quote graphic. So we're starting with something really simple here. Um, so I'll go into uh, Google and I'm just going to look up some tea quotes and I've already chosen one. I'm going to be using this one at the top that says where there's tea, there's hope because that is just so true. There's nothing a hot cup of tea can't fix. So I've mentioned before in my pick monkey tutorials that I like to use separate text boxes for each word, but that gets a little complicated and annoying if you're doing like a whole sentence or paragraph. So here I'm just using two separate text boxes and breaking up the quote. So I've got it there and now I'm going into the script fonts and I'm just choosing which uh, script I would like to go with. PicMonkey has lots of um, lots of different fonts to choose from. I think I like this one here and basically I'm just going to play around with this and sort of enlarge everything and get these letters and words looking the way I want. One good trick that you can do here is to just enlarge uh, single words or size single words by highlighting them. So that's um, kind of cool. And that helps with having less text boxes as well. And if you need more info about PicMonkey or if you think I'm going too fast, please check out my PicMonkey tutorial. I will link it in the description of this video or you can find it on my channel. And now I'm just going to change the color of the words. I'm just going for a nice dark gray, something really neutral and simple. And um, then I will also add the name of the person who said these words. And then that's pretty much it. I can actually save this image now. And as I save it to my computer, again, this image is now totally mine, totally copyright free, and I can use it on my blog or on my social media, however I want. So that's pretty cool. This is the type of graphic that I would use to finish my blog post just as a sort of nice ending uh, to, the, to the post. And there it is on my desktop, all ready to be uploaded and used however I like. All right, now I'm going to go back into PicMonkey and I'm just going to open up another image. I love this one. Just love the way it's shot. It actually looks like um, like a little styling shot that I would have put together, I think. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up the overlays menu and I'm just going to show you guys how I would make a cool sort of title graphic for a blog post or something. So I'm opening up the overlays. I'm grabbing just a simple geometric shape. I'm grabbing a square and I'm taking my square here and I'm just sort of centering it in the upper half of this graphic. Uh, so you can see how it sort of sits in the center there. And then with these overlays, you always have a border and an, and an interior, I guess. So I'm making the border white and I'm making the interior. You see how it changes color there. I'm making it transparent. So I just want the square border and then I'm going to fade that down a little uh, to 20% so that you can sort of see through it a bit. Now what I'm going to do now that that is done is I'm going to add a second square and I'm going to make this one white, no border. And then I'm, I think you can see where this is going. I'm going to fade it to 20% as well so that you can see the image through it. And then I'm going to uh, enlarge it here and just center it in the middle of that first square. So I get this nice square shape where I can place some words and really highlight some words. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I just want to crop this image down a little bit. Just like the first one, I don't want it to be this super long portrait image. Um, square images are great for the web or um, something that's just sort of slightly longer than a square is also, I find, really effective. So I think that looks nice. And I um, love that I can change all these images so much. 
So that looks perfect. And now all I have to do is add the words that I wanna highlight in that box. So I'm just gonna add some text boxes. I'll just, I always start by doing my words in a simple font um, and just sort of getting them onto the graphic. And then I usually go back and, and choose the script or whatever. And here I am using separate text boxes for each of my two words. And I'm just writing tea time and I'm gonna kind of center them and, um, and get them looking just the way I want. Now that I've got them in the right spot, I'm gonna choose the script font. I like this one here. Um, and I'll just sort of play around with that until I get it looking just the way I want. And I'm also gonna change the color to a sort of grayish here that really goes with the image. And I think you'll find PicMonkey is quite um, intuitive and you can play around with the colors and the size of the words and the fonts and it's quite simple. And now I've saved that. It's on my desktop, it's all mine and I can use it however I want. All right, for the last one, I wanna show you guys something really cool. Instead of going to the edit a photo, we're going to the design, then click blank canvas, and then it gives you all these different templates, which are basically just the sizes of the canvas, and I'm picking a perfectly square one, so this would be great for Instagram. Then you're gonna choose your canvas color, and you need it to be white, which is six Fs. That's the HTML code for white. So make sure you apply that white canvas color, and then we're gonna put some words on here. So at first, this one's all about the words, and then we're gonna be inserting a photograph into the text, which is pretty cool. So I'm writing out the words tea party, and what you wanna do here is just make sure that the words really take up the entire square, or the better part of it, because this is all about these words. And then once you've got that, you want to choose a font, probably a sans serif, a very simple, impactful font that doesn't have a lot of um, uh, wingedings or anything that's distracting. So you can see here, I'm just going for these somewhat chunky, very pared down, easy to read fonts. And that's gonna be perfect for inserting a photo. Okay, so now that I've done that, what I need to do is flatten this image. So you can see here, I've pulled over my layers palette. Once you've got that layers palette there, you're just gonna click in that bottom left corner and flatten the image. And what that does is it combines the text and the background into one item. So you don't have two text box and a canvas anymore. You just have one image here. All right, let's move on. So now what we're gonna do is go into the overlays menu, click add your own. And then you can pick any of the images that you downloaded from graphic stock. I really like this one here. I mean, this would be cute too with the teacup. So you can just choose any of the images that you grabbed from the site and you're gonna open the image and then you're gonna make, you're gonna enlarge it. Make sure that the image covers the entirety of the text. It doesn't need to cover the whole canvas, but it does need to cover the words. Then we're gonna go to blend modes and go to add and boom. How cute does that look? That's so cool. I mean, I think there's so many uses for this technique. You could write, let's party or something and have it be uh, mountains or a beach or I just think there's a lot of cool, <laughs> cool uses for this. So here's um, another graphic that I made with that really sort of Instagram-y, vintage -y looking graphic. And I did this one for my DIY tea bags. And I just had a lot of fun playing around with these free graphics that I got from Graphic Stock. And remember, if you want to try out their site, just go into the description of this video and you can get a seven day free trial, which is pretty cool. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. And don't forget to subscribe.